Hey, it's mimosa time And we got brunch on our mind I'm gonna find us a pub That's serving up some breakfast grub We roll from town to town To find the best food around Come have some champagne and juice With me on mimosas with moose So here we are in Hermitage at a place called Nadine's Hermitage Haven. Hermitage, Tennessee, home of President Andrew Jackson and his offensive parrot. Fun fact, this dude's bird got kicked out of his funeral for cussing. Apparently, Polly got a f***ing mouth. This little gym opens up earlier than most brunch spots at 8 a.m. The building's been so many different things, but it's finally settled down on a perfect little country corner spot. So we roll in and say hey to the bartenders so we can get the rundown of Nadine's. Hi, welcome to Nadine. My name is Jess. I'll be taking care of you today. Pleasure. I'm Moose. Nice to meet you, Moose. How's your day going? My day's going really well. Pretty How's good. your day going? Not too bad. I'm excited to be here at Nadine's okay. for some brunch. We have some really great menu items, so yeah, love to chat which, with you about Which it. one is yeah. your, which one would be your favorite? Like, what's your choice right here? Uh, definitely the huevos rancheros. Yeah. It's a vegetarian dish, which I love. And it's vegetarian. And it's vegetarian, absolutely. Yeah, we have a separate area of our menu for vegetarian dishes. It has two crispy tortillas, pinto beans, mm. chihuahua cheese. You can get your eggs how you want them. They come sunny. What the fuck um, is chihuahua cheese? Chihuahua cheese is like Mexican melty stringy cheese. It's really good. All right. A uh, little hot All right. sauce. All right, then, uh, so what would probably want to be one of the most popular ones on that, that people just order. Okay, the cure. Um, it's a new menu item. It has a green chili salsa on top. Mm. It's really good with bacon and hash browns and cheese. And That's literally what brunch is for, is to cure the hangover. Absolutely. Wonderful, that's amazing. Let me grab you a drink menu. All right, All right. Mm -hmm. what would be one of your signature cocktails? Um, it's actually not on our current menu. It's kind of like a secret menu uh -huh. item. Um, the Nadine's uh, Margarita Ooh. is made with fresh juice, Simple syrup agave. It's really, really good. Mm. It gets ordered all the time. Tequila. Uh, te yeah. I'm allergic to tequila. You're allergic to tequila? Yeah, I break out in handcuffs every time. <laughs> it's, 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 I tell you. Well, then we're gonna have to start off with a mimosa because that's what I gotta get. And we'll do classic orange juice. Please and thank you. All right, sounds great. So you know we have to wander around to check out the place. You know I'm nosy as So with finding small local spots like this, you find locals that frequent the place.
all and delicious. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Yeah. Just like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now there are all kinds of groups of people out there doing all kinds of shit. We just so happen to run into a breakfast crew. They're known as the Nashville Breakfast Club and they just so happen to be at Nadine's at the same time as us. The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Nashville Breakfast Club. <laughs> right over here. So that's the name of it, the actual official name, Nashville Breakfast Club. So this is my good friend Linda. Yeah. She, she and, and Angela do breakfast or go to different places for eating. She's a foodie. So she invited me to breakfast one morning, a Saturday breakfast. We get there and there is no breakfast. I, I would have been heartbroken. I would have cried. I would have cried. Was he ever? I get it. I get it. So as of that day, she became the BFF, and this is the ex-BFF. <laughs> but I, I softened up. I said the executive BFF. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, how big is the? How big is y'all's group? We have quite about twenty. Yeah, twenty in the group. But thank y'all so much for letting us come in here and talk to y'all. Oh. Alcohol and bad choices. Her. Right, cheers. Yeah. Cheers. All about bad choices. That's why I was kind of close up. Yeah. How long have y'all been coming to Nadine? Uh, pretty much, yeah, since it opened. Since it opened? Yeah. So, what's the plans for Saturday, fun day after brunch? We're getting a couple's massage. Hell yeah. Massage sounds dope. Massage sounds dope, though, for sure. Yeah. I'm actually crashing. They have they just don't know it yet. Nice. We're getting, we're all getting it's a thruple massage. It's a thruple massage, right here. It's a thruple massage, right here. Hell yeah. That's the cure. We get our uh, green chili salsa from Durango, Colorado. We dress okay. it over the top of Sunny Side Up eggs, crisp hash browns, tomato, jalapeno, and new ranch cooked bacon. Yeah. It smells so good. We have our Nashville hot chicken and waffle here. We make the Nashville hot sauce here in house. Cayenne Dominant. Everything's here. Everything's here. Homemade waffle batter, very delicious. We have our kernel, homemade biscuit, sausage gravy with also chopped sausage and scrambled egg with cheese, gentlemen. But I get the course. privilege of not just diving into some bomb ass food, but we get to dive into some talk with the talented Josh Page. This pretty boy came through to tell us a little about his music venture. Alright, so we're gonna do this right here. Big and homie. Yeah. Straight up. I got some pretty good French toes. But I feel like blow my mind the French toes has to be really cool. Do you cook at all? Yeah. So I grew up in Napa Valley, and I got to work around some really cool chefs. I was working in hotels and restaurants when I was growing up. So we used to cook together. I mean, by that, I mean most of them were cooking for me. <laughs> I enjoy it. I kind of, you know, I'm a hobby cooking Italian. And I don't know if you know this, but I bake fresh sourdough bread every week. It's like my jam. I yeah, I'm gonna have to get some of that. I'm, I'm, I gotta try this, though. This shit looks so good. So I, I'm, I literally grew up five minutes away from here. You do? Yeah. It just seems like less than like the last 10 years, it's like we've got this whole hot chicken thing come up. And I love spicy food. So I'm all about hot chicken, dude. Everywhere you go, somebody's got a, a Nashville hot chicken. There's some places I'll get the extra hot. I, I thought I was tough the other day, and I got the hottest hot chicken in one of the places in town, and I ate it. I had one bite, and I couldn't eat anything else. No, I couldn't eat anything else. Like, like, it's like, I'm not like, tasting dude. for a week. Uh -huh. It's like when they say, but you're talking, talking about the other brain freeze. Everything you hoped and dreamed of, gentlemen? It's delicious. Doing good? Yeah. Where I have had. I have had actual dreams about this. Right? Have you? Yeah. I'm very pleased with it. Glad your dreams are coming true here at Nadine's today. Y'all blueberries are so good, though. I don't know what it is, but y'all blueberries are so good. Thank you. I like the chili. The chili? You haven't tried it yet, right? No, I haven't tried that yet. I am going to pick it up here in This is a funny story. You now I usually admit to people, when I was when I was 10, I was watching TV. You remember Nickelodeon Slime Time Live? Hell yeah, I do. I was watching Nickelodeon Slime Time Live, and they were raising money. This group of guys walked out on the stage and like just watching how 
excited everybody was to see him. Yeah. And so it's that moment, dude. Backstreet Boys made me want to start music. Back. High school. I just I didn't have like a natural gift to do music. I just yeah. had like this big dream and a desire to do it. Yeah. And I met a kid in school. We both got bullied a lot. We just kind of became friends. And he was a really smart musician, great pianist, and a great singer. And he was like, dude, since we're hanging out, let me teach you how to sing. And he sat with me and he would like hit notes on the piano. So and I would try to like waver my pitch up and down yeah, so yeah. I could even hear what I was doing. Yeah. And that, that kind of became the beginning of my career. Nice. You know it's funny, even though like it was the fashion boys and made me want to do music. Yeah. When I was growing up I used to obsess over Garth Brooks and watch them swing down the yeah. And uh, my mom didn't have a whole lot of we didn't have a whole lot when I was growing up, we had five cassette takes. And the other one that I can remember is Shania Twain. And so <laughs> at the core of who I am. Man, I feel like a woman. I get it. That was the jam. That was that jam. That was odd. My life doesn't really make sense, man. Like Hell yeah. I started in the hood, my grandpa, he was a cattle rancher, and my mom had horses, so like country life, like, the cows, the horses, motocross, shooting guns, fishing. That was like yeah. all we really understood. Nice. You know, except for I could never catch fish because I was so bad at it. <laughs> Dude, I mean there's so much fish around here that you can't. You can still be bad and still catch plenty of fish. You'll be all right. Yeah. We'll go fish. Yeah. For sure. Hell yeah, man. So, what uh, what kind of what kind of do you like to do around Nashville? I'm waiting to see if this hot chicken is gonna completely destroy my mouth. Oh no, it's not going. No. If, if you thought lovely. that was if you thought that was mild, then yeah, you're good on the chicken. All right. Oh. Thanks, Jess. Thanks. She's the MVP right here. Oh, the two owners sit down with us for a drink as we chat about how this building is transformed from a pizza joint to a museum and turn it table. I'm sitting here with the owners of Nadine's. I'm sitting with the Nadine of Nadine's Hermitage Haven. John and I first met about 30 years ago in fifth yep. grade. In fifth grade? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so 17 years later, John was on a cross-country barbecue tour. He opened a barbecue restaurant in Pennsylvania. They were getting ready to go brick and mortar, and so they went around the country touring barbecue spots. He came through Nashville. What was your go-to smoke with? Up there, Applewood. Okay, hell yeah. yeah. Lots of musclemen have their orchards up yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. So that's the wood. A lot of apple orchard up there. Ton. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love Applewood. A lot of sweetness to it. Great. Mm, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay. So you were you did a little tour, stopped in Nashville. Yeah. Yep. And we got reunited at Red Door East. Yep. After oh. 17 years. Oh, Red Door. <laughs> that was a good night. Yeah. And so. at that point, I had been I had a corporate job, but I was always working in restaurants at night and uh -huh. going to culinary school. But, yeah, yeah, for sure. So I was working at, was I at Taste when we met stuff? Before. That was before. I was in fine dining for a little while, and then I went back to corporate. And then I moved up to Pennsylvania with him to help him open that barbecue place after that trip when we met. I convinced her to move up to PA. <laughs> nice. okay. She said, in three years. On a whim. I'll move up there, but in three years you got to move back down to Tennessee. So, okay. yeah. So that was. So we had a goal at that point. Yeah. <laughs> this place was the first time we ever came to Hermitage was when we came to look at this spot. Yep. And yep. we were like, oh my gosh, it has parking. And now everyone's it has complaining. Park. <laughs> it everyone's... just blows my mind. Like, that's the huge thing in Nashville. It's like, it's got parking. Yes. Like, that's the big yeah. seller yeah. right here. The lease yeah. was good, too. Yeah. yeah. And the lease was good. Yeah. And the timing was right on it. The timing was right. And, so what y'all, so what do y'all think about this little area right here? So much has changed in a very short amount of time. We love it. We love it. Yeah. We're moving out of this area. Yeah, we're moving now out here. Nice. So yeah, it's amazing. awesome. We're gonna, it's incredible yeah. what's going on with this. So I love what y'all are doing with this place. It's got a really good like small town country feel to it. So tell me a little bit about the food. Who, as far as like the, were you the concept creator of the food or? It was a collaboration. So we have different items on the menu. John's big Philly cheesesteak guy. Like like Pennsylvania Philly food and um, I moved around like I said growing up with before Pennsylvania I was in Canada so the poutine I had to have poutine on the menu that was one of my childhood poutine, staples so good. have you tried ours I haven't tried y'all oh, yet yeah try it oh the poutine. Try it. that's an old recipe I wanted to get on the menu when I was a kid, my neighbor um, in Canada, her mom was from Quebec, and like every Sunday I would go over to their house at like 3 o'clock show, I had a big thing of routine for all of us kids to come eat on. So when we opened nice. the restaurant, I called her up and I was like, hey, can I get that recipe? <laughs> did you get, so yeah. that's what it is? We got it, yeah. Hell yeah. So we've got like a legit poutine recipe. Oh yeah, it's great. 
That's what I'm talking about. As far as the menu, that we wanted to touch on, like the, the concept was we wanted to do American classics. Yeah, for sure. And then do them kind of in our own fashion. So we're always pushing to be better. We're not scared to change things if it's for the better. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. sometimes we get stuck on that. Yeah, you know? for sure. So we've gone through, the menu has gone through some evolutions. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I don't think it's done quite yet. Yeah, Dish is now named after guests. And so Employees. we're trying to bring that whole community uh, oh, vibe in. Watching yeah. everything come out that window, but just coming out of the kitchen was team's doing great. We get to step outside with the chef for a rundown of his brunch food creations. This dude loves to cook and it fucking shows. Juan! How are you, my friend? I'm good. How are you, buddy? Enjoying this job. Oh, you're enjoying this job? I love it. Okay, well, I'm loving this job, too. Which is eating the food that you love that I, you love making. Yeah, I put all my love in the food. Yeah. They come in happy and they live happier from here. Yeah. So, so I'm proud. How, how long have you worked here? I'm here three months after we opened. Three months after they opened? Yep. And they've been open for how long? For like... Almost three years. Then we come in with the one chicken because they say one we're here all time long. We gotta do something. We gotta make them yeah. sandwiches. And huh? we start to work with John uh, doing that sandwich. Yeah. And we've been practicing to do it and everybody love it. And now we sell a lot of that sandwiches. Yeah. But I have a good team right here. Um, okay. We are like a, a good team. Uh, something I'm nice. I cannot do everything. Yeah. I got a, in the kitchen kitchen, I got the best cooks. Nice. Nice. It's like it's showing in your food because it comes out great. Absolutely delicious. If I don't like it, something I change quick. And then it's gone. It's, yeah, it's yeah, done. I mean, it's a big old group of people, just not just one group of people, but a couple of groups of people out here waiting earlier just to get some brunch yeah, to get your food. Yeah, because they know. Because they best. know. They know. I'm they here. know what the deal is. Yeah. They know we do we do everything good here. We everything is fresh. Yeah. We try to do everything with the fresh products. Yeah. Every morning I check the quality of uh, the produce. Yeah, everything, for sure. Everything, if something is not the standard we are looking, we send it back. We're never gonna... And then you yell at them, you're like, mother... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get we, that bullshit out of here. Yeah, we... Everything you're pumping out is on point. You're killing it, I'm telling you right now. Just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much for Thank taking you so your much, time. Sir. I know you're super busy, yep. so I'm gonna get you back to it, okay? Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Finally finishing up at Nadine's, we take a ride over to the east side, checking out a brewery that also has some slamming pizza. East Nashville Beer Works is a perfect chill spot with plenty of space for indoor and outdoor hangs. We meet up with the general manager so we can find out more about East Nashville Beer Works. The official title, yeah, the title, the official title for it is The Brew House. So, this brew house, uh, we at least have a dozen tanks here. We, we, have, we have four 15 barrel fermenters, two 30 barrel fermenters. Uh, so what that means is we can brew 465 gallons at a time and fill one of these fermenters, or we brew two of those 465 gallon batches and fill one of those 30 barrel fermenters. Damn. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so a uh, typical day uh, for actually brewing the beer is about eight hour day. Uh, we'll start about 8, 8.30 in the morning with mixing the grain with the hot water. And then from there, uh, once that get all, gets all mixed together, we're going to steep it for about 45 minutes. And then from there, we're going to start drawing that off because at that point it's turned into sugar. Okay. Um, and it's that sugary goodness that okay, we so want. Okay, so a little sweetness. It's got, right. got some really nice sweetness to it. And so we'll do that, but then on top of that, we'll add water to the top of that grain bed to wash through there and filter out the rest of those sugars. So that takes about an hour and a half to two hours total uh, to get the kettle filled. And then from there, we bring it to a boil. Uh, once we bring it to a boil, we're going to boil for about 90 minutes. And then uh, that we send it through a heat exchanger, still about boiling hot, but it comes out the heat exchanger about 68, 66 degrees Fahrenheit into one of these fermenters. Uh -huh. uh, once we have that fermenter loaded up, we pitch the yeast and uh, ho hopefully we come in the next day and magic is happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's one of those like spend a little extra time on the ingredients, spend a lot extra money on the ingredients and put out a better product. Spend a little extra time on that taste. And Yep, exactly. And yeah. then, because if what's, you're gonna drink good beer, you wanna have good pizza. What's your pizza that's the, the number one that's that slung out those doors? Oh that's my like, goodness. Just, Ooh. Our our white pizza is really popular, uh, mainly because of the. It's honey. like a Parmesan crust. Oh uh, no, it's it's a it's a regular uh, crust, but it has crust, uh, uh, but it has it has goat cheese on it. Um, I think 
I have to double check on the sauce, oh, but it has it yeah. has goat cheese on it, and then it has a nice honey drizzle around it as well. Uh, but yeah, no, come summertime, all this cabling you see here, uh, that is actually, it will get dropped down, and it's a hop trellis, so we'll have all this nice natural shade growing. Right. That is one of the ingredients that we use in brewing beer. Next day, and see how much they've grown as a result. Oh, yeah. so. so what's your favorite kind of beer? Like, what's your, what's your go-to? My go-to? So yeah, you asked me this earlier, and it's a good question. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm drinking right now is the Grootly Lager. It's our that 4.5% North yeah. American style Bach. Um, uh, Blondales are usually a good choice. Pilsners, as of late, have been uh, have been kind of my go-to. Pilsners beers. are more on the light end, right? very much on the light end. Yeah, yeah. So and it's so, like it's like if you're not a big, huge craft drinker, like you can go towards a Pilsner, Pilsner and be right. more yeah, inclined. Yeah, and then for me, you know, as a craft brewer, it's it's a difficult style to brew. So well-crafted Pilsners are like always like what the cra- what a brewer is always seeking out. So like Bell's Lager in the Lakes has been one of my go-tos because it's in a can, so you can take it anywhere. Uh, but then, uh, you know, it's just a really good crushable beer and uh, it's got a lot of flavor. If you're still looking for some dope local spots, then look no further than Nadine's Hermitage Haven in East Nashville Beer Works. This is where you can still sit down with the local and talk shit about Broadway. So until next time, this is Mimosas with Moose. Cheers.